Hello and welcome to today's video. So today I want to talk to you about five things that people that heal have in common. Five things that people who heal do and five things that people who heal prioritize. Because everyone's got a different opinion about what healing is and how to do it and is it this way, is it that way. I think that the best way you can do it, that you can figure this out, is to just look at the people that have already done it and figure out like what they all had in common and if you can kind of do something similar to what they did, you'll probably get similar results. So instead of just having some theories about it, it's like I'm good, I'm, I decided to look at the people that I've worked with that have made the most progress and try to find the common denominators, like the common factors between these people and try to figure out what they were doing that caused them to get those results and what were those, what were those five biggest things. And I'm gonna say now, Number four, so I've got these written down just here. Number four is, I'm going to give you a trigger warning for that one because it's a bit triggering. And number five is, is probably going to shock you a little bit because it's completely the opposite of what you probably think. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see when we get that. So five things that people that heal have in common. Number one, they stop trying to figure it out alone. And this doesn't mean that you stop taking responsibility for the situation. In fact, it's the complete opposite. This is also one of these really important things. People that heal, they take responsibility for the situation that they're in. It doesn't mean it's your fault. It doesn't mean it's your fault where you ended up. You know, a lot of, a lot of illness is caused by like childhood trauma or by doing things without knowing about the consequences of those, those things. Like a lot of people get maybe like amalgam fillings. They don't know that, that that could be harmful. A lot of people stay in moles for a long time. They don't know that it's a bad thing, you know? So it's not your fault but it is your responsibility to do something about this situation, whatever it is. So taking responsibility is really important there, but they, they don't try and do it by themselves. They don't try and figure it out alone. And this looks different for everyone, depending on the situation that they're in and what they're going through. But without exception, the more that people get help from other people, the faster results that they get and the more their lives are able to change in a short period of time, which is what you want for healing, right? Healing is all about change. So if you want your life to change faster, the more people that are involved in that is going to be is going to be better. For a long time, I tried to do I tried to do healing alone. It just doesn't work, you know. Now I sit here and I work with like I have a, like a weekly meeting with like like two or three different people, and I have like two weekly, monthly meetings with also two or three different people, and then I do like one-off, spontaneous things, trying new things all the time, and it's it's you. You're going to find the answers through people. Like all healing is facilitated through an understanding or a change or a perspective shift, and it all comes from other people. And there's a lot you can like do online. There's a lot you can get for free. But you have you really you you really want to be like working with someone, trying different things, and you just have to you just have to try. And I I know it's expensive. I know it costs money. I know I know you've probably tried lots of things already. But keep trying. Like you'll find somebody that really makes a difference if you just just keep going. But people that the people that I find that stay the most stuck, the most sick, and make no progress, they don't work with anyone. They don't get any extra additional help. They don't get any help from outside. They're just doing it all by themselves. Those people stay stuck for a very long time. Like I did that for a long time. I see a lot of people do that for a long time. Don't be that person. Figure out how you can get help and ask for help and get it. And and the step from there is get the right help. But getting some help, even if it's not the best form, is better than not getting any. So the people that that heal. They, they get help, they work with people, they don't try and figure it out by themselves. The second point here is they want to figure out how they have to change if they want to heal. So earlier I just used the word change. Healing, it can feel like quite an intangible subject or quite an intangible concept when you think about where you are and where you want to be, it feels impossible. Like how can I get from A to B? Like it's such a big jump. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't actually happen like that. It's never a really big jump. It's a lot of like, little tiny steps, it's not a big leap. And to make those steps, each step is you changing in some way. It's you changing your understanding, it's you changing your belief, it's you changing your perception, it's you changing something. You changing your approach, you changing the energy behind the things that you're doing, it's all about change. So if you really wanna heal, forget the word heal, forget the word healing, forget the word heal, they're not helpful, they're actually just kind of annoying, they don't, it really doesn't help. Instead, look at the word change. The more you're changing, the more you're changing the way that you look at the world, the more that you're changing what you're doing, the more you change your approach, the more changes, the more your life will change. So 
change things, try and do things differently and try and see how, see what you can do to become a different person and that will change the results that you're getting. So this is one of these really common things. People that get the best results, they've got this open-mindedness, this growth mindset. They're actively looking for change. They want things to change. They want to see how they can change. They want to see how they can think about the situation differently. They want to see how they can see their problems in a different way. They want to see how they can see what happened to them in the, in the past in a different way. They want to see money and they want to see people and they want to see emotions in a different way. They want to see nutrients and bacteria. They want to see all of the, every, everything that comes in hand in hand with healing and every other thing. But they're all about change. Like, okay, the, the results that I have are because I'm seeing things this way. How can I change that? And then you get different results. So it's all about change there. So this is a, a huge one. You have to be willing to change. And a lot of people don't want to change. If you don't change, you don't heal. That's, that's it. So if you're not healing or you're feeling stuck there, maybe we need to try and change some things up, change things a little bit more. And that can be really hard to do alone. And that's why point one is really important. If you can get some help, people can help you change. So a third point here. They work both on the physical and the non-physical aspects of health and wellness. So this means not just being purely focused on one side of the situation. A lot of people just focus on the physical because you have evidence that may show you that there are physical things happening. Say, for example, you've done lots of functional testing or you'll have blood tests that are out of range or you've got physical things that are happening in your physical body, which leads you to the conclusion that it must be a physical thing that needs to change in order for those things to change. It often is not the case. In these situations, you always want to be doing both. You always want to be working the physical and the non-physical aspects of the healing process. And it goes the other way around too. I see some people trying to think positively out of a situation or meditate their way through or like manifest out of a situation when actually physical action needs to be taken. You need to change your diet or supplements or make some kind of like physical change. The people that really heal, they're doing both. They're changing the physical stuff and they're changing the emotional stuff, the non-physical stuff. They're looking at the thought patterns, the beliefs, they're in therapy, they're doing stuff like that. They're also doing the physical things, trying different diets, trying eating in different ways, trying different supplements, trying different things. They're doing both, the physical and the non-physical. If there's one thing, looking back in my healing process, that I would change, it's that I would work the non-physical aspects sooner. Because I, I just worked on the physical side for like the first two or three years and I didn't put any effort or focus into the non-physical aspects for that stage. And it was like retrospectively my biggest mistake. It was the, the thing that cost me the most progress. It cost me the most time. It's, if I went back and I were to do it again, I would look way more into those non-physical aspects of the healing process. So if you're on either side, if you're like doing more of the spiritual, the emotional, the trauma stuff, Make sure that you're not abusing or neglecting the physical. And if you're doing lots of the physical stuff, you know, eating the clean diet, GAPS, keto, paleo, carnivore, you're doing all the physical things, the supplements, make sure you're also doing the non-physical stuff, the nervous system regulation, the emotional work, the changing your beliefs, working on addiction, self-sabotage, things like that. Make sure that you're working on both simultaneously or wherever you're at, because there's always work to be done on both. And you're, you're probably just not getting the progress that you could be if you're not doing both simultaneously. And the people that heal, the people that get the best results, they're doing both continuously. Fourth, this is this is the one that's a little bit triggering. This is, I'm, I'm just going to say it. The people that heal, they they don't play victim. They don't, they don't stay a victim of their circumstance. They find their power and they become powerful people. And this looks like on a physical level, like they feel... A connection with their body and they're able to find a connection to what's happening inside them and they find meaning and they find purpose in the, the their process so instead of the disease or the health problems or the symptoms just being like something that's being inflicted upon you that you're powerless to control and it's like a punishment or it's something you're completely out of control of you're a victim to that they find meaning in it okay why is this happening how is this serving me how can i be empowered in this situation how can i find power here they try to seek understanding and come to a place where you're able to understand and, and take some form of action instead of just staying a victim of circumstance and not, not taking action and not, not, doing, not doing anything, just staying stuck exactly where you are. And it's really tricky because sometimes we are victimized as people, you know, bad things happen to us. 
However, we bad, like bad things happen, and then we we stay there and we pretend that we're in a position where we are still powerless when actually we do have power. There is something we can do. We can take an action and we just choose not to because either it's hard or it's scary or it's uncomfortable or we just, we actually genuinely can't even see our power. But people that heal, they try and find their power again. And this manifests on all different levels. So if you're out of touch with your power, physically, your body cannot detox. Your body cannot stimulate an immune response. You will have parasites, you'll have co-infections, you will have a whole bunch of stuff living in your body and you can't get it out because your power is gone. You can't say no to these organisms. They live inside of you. In relationships, you probably feel resentful. You probably feel like you have to manipulate people to get your needs met. You don't have strong boundaries and it's really hard for you to show up powerfully in relationships, very often using symptoms or your health conditions to set boundaries or to say no in situations or to not do certain things because you because of your because of your of your health and like i've been there and that's okay like if that's where you're at that's fine but there does come a stage where if you do want to heal you have to realize you are actually powerful you, you actually have power inside of you and you need to figure out a way to start using it and to start taking action using that power and this will spill over into all different aspects of your life you know when you find your power you will not settle for, for kind of shitty relationships. You'll have really good relationships with strong boundaries that feel meaningful, that, that give you a sense of purpose and a sense of like connection and intimacy. You will show up in the world and you will have a, a, a profoundly positive impact on people around you. And as a, a symptom of doing that, you will become wealthy. You will make a lot of money because if you have a, a positive impact on the world, you will you will make money. That's just a consequence of it. People that do good things make money doing good things. That's kind of just how it works. And the more good things you do, the more money you make. So your situation, instead of being in a powerless situation, I don't have enough money. I can't do this. I can't afford that. I can't pay the bills. You come to a position where you have power. You can do things. You can do that. But it all starts inside. You all, it all, it's all about power and it all happens internally first. So people that heal, they find their power. They, they don't stay as victims. They empower themselves and then they move into taking actions in their life that allow them to live empowered lives. That is one of the hardest points and it's really triggering. I like even saying it myself, I, it triggers me myself because I see areas of my life where I still play victim and it's, it's a hard pattern to break. You know, if that's how you were, if that's how you kept yourself safe in, in environments in, in the past, then you'll keep doing it because it's a survival mechanism. But I know I'm just pretending to myself. I know I'm actually very powerful and it's about, continually working on that and finding that power inside of you and as you do your whole life will change immune system gets strong you kick co you kick co-infections away you kick lyme ebv your, your immune system just destroys those things you get on top of it, like stuff changes so people that heal they find their power and finally this is the one that you you're probably not going to believe and it's kind of funny on people that heal they stop trying so hard and they stop taking it so seriously so this is a tricky one because when you're in a place where your life feels unbearable and intolerable, you want to do everything you can to get into a different place. But this is a really resistive energy. This is taking action, not because you're going towards what you want, but because you're trying to avoid what you don't want. And that actually just creates more of what you don't want. When you get to a point where you're okay with the process, you know, and it doesn't mean like you, you necessarily have to fall in love with healing, but you can, I have, I'm at that point now, but you get to a point where you, where you accept it and you're okay with it and you can appreciate what healing is and what the healing process looks like. It stops being so like, I have to get away from where I am and I have to get to where I want to go. There's no urgency. It's not such a rush. You're just like, okay, I'm here for this. I'm, I'm okay with this. And instead of like trying so hard and like there's this frantic desperation of like, I can't be here, I need to get somewhere else. You just stop kind of trying and you're like, okay, this is the process, I'm okay with it. And instead of like sprinting and crashing and sprinting and crashing, you just kind of walking along and you actually make far more progress. This is that old, the, the, the old tale, um, the tortoise versus the hare, you know, the hare is running along, but the tortoise is just plodding along, taking it slow, enjoying himself it's like yep yeah, okay and it's sustainable and you that's how you really get progress is you stop trying so hard and it doesn't mean like you give up it doesn't mean you become a victim again it just means you're at peace with the process and it's not this like frantic desperate effort to get somewhere you're not 
It's accepting where you are and enjoying the process of, go of going where you're going. So imagine being in a car instead of getting to the place that you're traveling to and being like stressed about going there. It's like you're looking out the windows and you're like, wow, look at this beautiful scenery. Oh, wow, look at that bird. Oh, look at this. And you're like enjoying the process. And that makes the journey like way faster and you actually get there more quickly. And that's closer to what healing actually is. So those are the five things that people who heal have in common. I'm go I've got them written down here for you. So I'm just going to read them out really quickly to summarize. Firstly, they stop trying to figure it out alone. They get help. They connect with people. Your healing is literally like a little puzzle piece that you are holding, but you can't see. But if you can talk to the right person, they can point at that puzzle piece and say, like, have you looked at that? Or have you seen this? Like, you've got this puzzle piece that you're holding behind your head. You can't see it. Like, why don't you move it here? And you're like, oh, yeah, I can heal. You'll never find it by yourself. You need other people to help you do that. Secondly, they want to figure out how they have to change if they want to heal. So throw the word healing out the window, change it to the word change. The more you change, the more you'll heal. So keep trying to change who you are, change your beliefs, change your understandings, change your perceptions on the reality and how the world works. And the more you change it, the closer to healing that you'll get. Third, they work both the physical and the non-physical aspects of health and wellness. So whether you have a tendency to work more on the supplements and the diet and like perfect that, you might need more of the other side or if you over spiritualize things or you're just doing the trauma and nervous system work and maybe you have like have nutritional deficiencies or there's physical things that you may be missing either way you have to do both the people that get the best results are doing both simultaneously and they do them consistently so they're working usually like with a therapist or some kind of person to help them working on, on the mind and the maybe the nervous system stuff and they're also working with somebody that maybe looks at like functional labs um, that that side of things you know they're doing both and it doesn't mean that's necessarily where you're at right now, but most of the time you, you, do, you do need both and, you, and there's a lot of progress to be had if you do both simultaneously. Fourth, a little bit triggering, they stop playing victim, they become powerful. People that heal, heal because they, they find the power inside themselves. Healing is a process that happens inside of yourself. Your healing doesn't come from outside of you, it's something that happens inside of you. And if you keep pretending that you're not powerful, you will keep pretending that you can't heal. Whereas if you can find that you are powerful, you will find that healing is just your natural innate state and you will become that. So people that heal, they find their power and they stop playing victim. Finally, they stop trying so hard. Again, this doesn't mean being a victim and just not doing anything. It means slowing down and actually enjoying the process for what it is. Take it, take it easy. Like, Don't do it in such a desperate, rushed energy. Enjoy the process. The goal is not to get to the end because by the time you get to the end, you'll realize you never stop healing. There's always one more thing. And then you'll be laying on your deathbed thinking, if only I could have just enjoyed the journey, then I would have had a much better life. So the people that, that, that are getting the best results, they really stop trying so hard. And in that, it's such a non-resistive state. You just, you just get so many, so much faster results and you actually enjoy the process as it happens too. So I hope you found that really helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So that's for the video. Let's just see if there's any, any live questions. If there are, I'll answer them. If not, we'll just wrap it up. Cool. No questions, but Julie did pop on. She said, um, sorry, I have to go, but I love this talk. Thanks, William. You're, you're most welcome, Julie. Um, thanks for coming. I think this is a really profound message. Cool. So I'm going to wrap this up. I will see you in the next one. Again, if you do have any questions after watching this, just let me know. Leave me a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.